Hello, everybody. I was going to make a penzanella salad. Have you ever heard of that? That's a an Italian salad with stale bread um, soaked. This was my ciabatta bread I was going to use for croutons. Uh, or excuse me, I was going to use for panzanella, but we used too many for croutons the other day. And now I don't have enough. So there really are going to be croutons for this salad. This is iceberg lettuce. They went to the store because I was away. And he bought, I think, three heads of iceberg and one three pack of romaine. So we've been eating a lot of salad since I got home. <laughs> so I'm out of veg. I actually need to go to the store a little bit. But this is kind of like, again, elementary, right? You know how to make a salad. But don't you often go for the salad standards of cucumbers and tomatoes and red onion and uh, whatever else, you know, green pepper or croutons, Italian dressing, ranch dressing. Well, the point of this little video is to remind us that a salad is just vegetables and whatnot. You can put meat and cheese in too, but this is just to go with our shrimp dinner. So I have iceberg lettuce and a couple tomatoes and I always keep them to the side because Thane doesn't love them. I love tomatoes. So I'm gonna throw a couple other things in. I had this in a baggie. That's gonna go in. <laughs> so I'm gonna put a little bit of green pepper in. Okay, I'm gonna show you a couple things here. So stay with me, okay? And you can make them bite size or minced up however you wanna do. And as a reminder, how to hold your knife. Go like this. Look, see, like this. Especially your thumb. And then you wrap your three fingers around. Okay, and that way it's not on the spine. Please don't do that. That's not at all steady. Grab it like this, three fingers around. Okay, put that on, make a mess. That's part of it, you gotta make a mess. <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay, then I have um, some peas that I had left. I'm gonna put cold peas in. So I'm gonna do a little handful of those. They're especially good with a mayonnaise base, like my homemade ranch. Okay, and then Thane loves when I do this, and I showed a video where I took raw vegetables. I think I did broccoli and cauliflower before, but this time I had a whole lot of asparagus. So what I did was I chopped it up, however you want, and I used inexpensive bottled Italian dressing. Yes, so even though I might use ranch on this salad, he might use Italian, and we like, you know, we actually like this bottle dressing. I usually make a good seasons and jazz it up a little bit, but, and I have a, I have a, um, a dry mix that I make, and I put that in the recipe file, so if you want to make your own good seasons and just add your vinegar and oil and a little splash of water, but we like this quite a bit, and so I am going to actually add some, and there, it's soaked up now, you know, the, the, uh, dressing. It soaked up that asparagus. It's fresh asparagus. But I like to also do this. Here's another little thing. If you're having company and you're putting out like a, a veg platter or charcuterie, since that's the word, I call it a different thing once in a while. But if you're, if you're doing that, the asparagus spears, you know, clean them off, trim them, and dry them and then soak them in a dressing and then take them off and like shake off the excess. And they are wonderful because they'll get tender and they're to pick up and munch on like that. They're so good like that. And people don't expect it, but like people think you went out of your way and you really didn't. Okay, where's my little peelers? Okay, I'm just gonna cut up this carrot. Let me do this real quick. I have these three little peelers that I love. See these little guys? They all do different things. This will go to my hermit crab, not all of it. I only have a couple little Hermes left. So I think it's this one. Maybe it's the blue one. We'll see, yeah, I think it's the blue one. Watch what this does. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And now you got these cute little curls, aren't they cute? You've seen me do this before. And yeah, it's just me and Thane, but fancy things are 
pretty to eat and sometimes nicer. But you know what I'm gonna do? I'm not gonna leave them in these big curls. I'm just gonna cut them up a little bit like this. Put them on top again. La 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 la. Yeah, I, I'll make a big salad and a big platter once in a while. And I keep little pockets of different veg around as if it's like a salad bar. Because if you don't want green pepper, it's all here. And then tomatoes here. And your carrots are here. And your, you know, whatever. All the way around so you can grab your base and then take a little bit of this and that. But you don't have to have them in separate bowls. So there's a little salad that we have. We're going to use our homemade ciabatta bread croutons. They had a little olive oil in a very hot oven. And I put a little, I think Asiago and garlic on these ones. But we used the bottom buns for our dinner yesterday, okay? There's homemade ranch. And then Thing can choose this dressing if he feels like it. But I wanted to just kind of do as a reminder, you don't need to just have cucumbers and lettuce and tomato in your salad. I wish I had some red onion because that really jazzes it up. So, all right, and then if you want a little salt and pepper, you know, you can do that. I don't generally, but I like it on my tomatoes. So, all righty, I gotta get the rest of dinner going. All righty, um, I'm gonna make a little bit of, I have some raw shrimp that has been rinsed and dried the best I could, tails on and deveined and cleaned, but raw. If you buy frozen shrimp, these, uh, these are gonna taste better that they're raw and then you cook them because the other kind that you buy, the cooked stuff already, it's already cooked. So you are double cooking it, just think of that. Now I use it here and there, but I prefer these. Okay, that's what restaurants use. So I'm gonna do a little breading. I start with an egg because that's like a binder, okay? So there's that, but this is what I wanna show you. You guys know how to bread things. I usually do a flour then an egg wash, and then a breadcrumbs. In this case, I'm gonna use half panko and half just regular breadcrumbs. You could use Cheez-Its or saltines or whatever you want, but I'm just gonna do this. Sometimes I'll put cheese, uh, like a Parmesan or something in it. Sometimes I put garlic salt in it. Um, I'm just gonna do this. Okay, I might just air fry these. I don't know, these, these shrimp. I think that's what I'm gonna do with them. But Normally you would like add a little milk, right? To this or water a little bit. But I wanna show you that you can use other things as your liquid to help before you put it in your dry breadcrumbs. How about this stuff? You've seen me use this before. Yes, I have a homemade Benihana dipping sauce. Like if you're at the hibachi and you're eating shrimp and you dip in that little colored, you know, pink sauce. Um, it's in the recipe files, okay, and the albums, and then you go to recipe cards or recipe files. I forget what I call it. I could pour a little of this in there and mix it up. My friend Trisha said, I never thought of using Caesar dressing in this as your base because it gives a little extra flavor before it goes in the plain breadcrumbs, right? Um, how about some hot sauce in there? You can put in what you want. You can mix and match. I have a little extra of the horseradish sauce. You know, uh, you could do that. So what am I gonna do here today? I think that I will use, because of the other flavor profiles that I'm gonna cook with, I am gonna use a little bit of this. Yum, yum sauce, and it is good, okay? A lot of times I'll just use cornstarch to because that really keeps things crispy, okay? So let's see. I've never done this one before, you know, but that's, Again, the purpose of the group is to say, hey, how about this? How about that? It does look like it needs a little more moisture, doesn't it? What can I put in here? Let's look. Um, I will put a little splash of milk in. Because they were both kind of a little bit thick. I don't want too much. I want it, the breadcrumbs to hold. I can always add more, right? Okay, you like my pie plates? <laughs> I always do that. Then the... Then I used to use a little bowl and the breadcrumbs would go everywhere. Oh, they still go everywhere, but you know. You probably hear my air fryer on right now, but just ignore that. At least it's not music that YouTube's gonna shut me down for, right? Okay, let's get a couple going. I just wanna show you a few. 
Just get them in there and soak it up. Let's see what this looks like. Flip them around. Um, I should do it this way. And then I'm going to press them real hard in here, trying to keep one hand wet and one dry. Press that in there. You can double bread them if you want. That means just put them right back in here and in there. But see, that looks pretty good, right? Is everything covered? Looks nice. I'm going to lay them out. They'll dry out a little bit that way, too. I tend to do more than one because <laughs> I do everything fast. My sister says, I definitely cook a lot slower on here than I do in real life. These would be finished by now. <laughs> so I just smush them in there like that. Whoops, I did too much smushing. Oh, I'm sorry, baby. I like kind of destroyed him. <laughs> Keep its integrity. Don't smash it too much. Here we go like that. So I'll continue doing this and then I'll be back. All right, I have all the shrimp breaded and they're kind of drying out just a little bit, not too much. It doesn't matter too much, but I just don't want them too, too wet. And I decided I am gonna air fry these. So I like to use a little spray, not olive oil, but one of these. I did a little demo on the all different kinds that you're supposed to use in your air fryers. Okay, I like that one. Um, and also see how I have extra breadcrumbs? You can't use them again, so. Um, throw them away, okay? Don't even feed them to the birds. There we go. And to go with our shrimp, I am gonna make a little cocktail sauce at home. Again, another video on that. This was the end of this one, just a little store-bought. Uh, it's kind of more, it's thinner, and it's not as strong as, like, say, this brand is. I love this brand, it's really good. And it's called cream style. You've heard it called horsey mayo. You know, it's a combination. And I started to do it and I thought, no, I want you to see. So the end of the one is in here and then some of the other. So see how this one is thicker? That's this. And you can almost see little chunks of the horseradish in there. That's what we like. We like it a little hotter than this is more like a horsey mayo. But in any case, whichever one you want to use, I'm going to put some more in. Some like it hot, and we do. It's just two things. Two things. You know what the other one is. Mr. Ketchup. Okay. And it's uh, to me, it's about half and half. You can always um, do a little less if you don't want to. Do you ever have too much horseradish that you feel like it's like clearing your sinuses? You know? It's like, I love when that happens. Not really. And you just mix it up, literally, and you have your cocktail sauce. I am such a cocktail sauce snob. I always ask for it if I get fish in the restaurant, and then I do this and taste it, and I go, eh, man, nah, it's bottled stuff. I don't like it. This is so much fresher, even though they both came out of a ready-made thing. So there's your cocktail sauce. How fast was that, right? And inexpensive, too. Don't buy the stuff that's already made in a bottle cocktail sauce. It's just not good. So moving on.